First of all, um, I'm happy to be here today because this is a, a subject I feel very passionate about. And um, as was mentioned, I'm a physician and have spent a lot of time in a lot of different places um, doing medical diplomacy, which is really kind of a, a piece of, of cultural diplomacy. Um, I was in the Philippines right after the typhoon uh, for about a month, and I'm going back uh, next Wednesday. Um, I've been in Ghana several times with Project Hope and, and the U.S. Navy, where um, it was a, a joint activity with a number of different military and uh, NGO organizations, um, as well as Central and, and South America. So it's, what I have to say today is, though I'm a physician and I kind of have a little bit of that perspective, it's really appropriate to any, any kind of discipline one is, has. For example, our son went to Kenya. He started out as, as a medical volunteer, but then he went back the next year and um, was the still photographer for a movie, for a documentary film that was called The Music Lesson, which really used music as a piece of cultural diplomacy. And what that was, in fact, it, it's, it showed periodically on the local TV station here, so you may see it. It was also at National Geographic. But what they did was chill high school students from the Boston Youth Symphony, I think was the proper name, went to Kenya, to a very remote area in Lakipia, and they brought their instruments, and they made music with the local children. And the instruments were very different, but still they made their music together. And so what the, um, the documentary shows is, is how the children work together to make their music, and it's, it's really quite a nice documentary. But the point of that is, is that music, art, science, really anything can be the vehicle for cultural diplomacy. So whatever your chosen discipline is, think of ways in which you can use that discipline for this message. So what is culture? It's the shared way a group or social unit does things. And it's really all different kinds of things. It's, it's what we eat, what we wear, how we dance, how we sing, how we think. It's, it's, it's all the different parts that go together to make us who we are. And what is diplomacy? It's dialogue or negotiation between groups or states. Dialogue is communication among two parties, often with the aim of confidence building. <clears throat> it's necessary, the employment of tact is necessary to find mutually acceptable solutions to common problems. And the idea, it's a mutual activity. So what then is cultural diplomacy? It's the exchange of ideas information, art, lifestyles, value systems, traditions, beliefs, and other aspects of culture. The important thing is it is the exchange of ideas. And it doesn't mean that everybody has to agree. The point isn't for everyone to say, well, I guess this is really the next slide, so I won't ramble on with that. The point isn't to say, it's me, it's to look at it as us. It's not, I am right, but you are right too. It's possible to have more than one sort of reality at the same time. It isn't, my way is better, but rather, what is your way? Trying to, um, to magnify or, or to maximize the communication. It's not arrogance, rather it's acceptance. It's not imposing my way, but rather understanding your way. And again, there can be 10 different ways or a million different ways. That's not the part that matters. The part that matters is that people are in an environment where they feel free to communicate and they feel free to listen, and there's genuine listening and communication. I sort of identified three C's of cultural diplomacy, being curious, it's really important to, to have a sense of, um, of curiosity and enthusiasm and in wanting to explore the world around you, because that's really what it's all about. And caring. There has to be a genuine sense of caring about others and caring about what it is that others are sharing with you. And to be considerate. Manners and, and, and a, a, a consideration of the other's beliefs and a respect of the other's beliefs is key. And it's really just a passion for the world around us. What are some of the values? A respect for others, 
and accept differences. And the involvement can be locally or globally. You know, when people th hear the words cultural diplomacy, you think, oh, that you have to be a diplomat, you have to be in the State Department, you have to be some um, famous person. But really, the beginnings of cultural diplomacy are in your own backyard. They're, they're really at home with, with other people. You know, even if it's a matter of going, in fact, we went, my husband and I have done a lot of volunteer work in Guatemala, and we recently went to a, a Guatemalan restaurant. And we had a delightful time talking to the people that work there about why, how, why they cooked the food the way they cooked it and, and, and learning about the way they did things. So why is cultural diplomacy important? For us as individuals, it really makes our lives more rewarding. We can develop a greater knowledge base. And I frankly kind of do believe in knowledge for knowledge's sake. Because if you have that knowledge, whether you try or not, you will apply it to everything you do. When you have the approach of, of, of trying to listen and care and, and looking at things from a, a more global perspective, it, 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 it's, it's just obvious in everything you do. It facilitates business opportunities. And over time, it can help resolve international crises. I think if we look at, at the parts of the world today where, that are most in crisis, many of those are due to an inability to communicate and an inability to accept differences. And hopefully it will contribute to peace locally, nationally, and globally. The where of cultural diplomacy, it can be in your community, wherever you are, anywhere in the world. It's not something special. It's something that can be every day with us. There's something for everyone, including you. So what do you do? Care about others. Dialogue with others about their culture and yours. And learn about others' cultures. What are some opportunities? These are just sort of, I won't say silly, but they're, they're very simple examples. It's really anything you want to do. You know, it, at school, we talked about the um, exchange programs in your neighborhood on vacation. You know, even if you go, so today you're in Washington, D.C. Later this week, you're going to Baltimore, and you're going to New York City. You'll find that each of those three cities has a little bit different culture. You know, so the, the, the cultures are everywhere. Sharing in the arts and movies, formal organizations, and cultural exchange programs. But the opportunities are everywhere. And what are things you can do? You can teach language, teach, you know, teach your language as a second language or teach English as a second language, tutor children at an inner city school, work at a summer camp, even helping at a nursing home. You know, the elderly have parts of their own culture as well. Join a band, share music, study abroad, work abroad, or volunteer anywhere. And it's doing most anything with others who are different from you. It's more the way you do it than the what you do. So the opportunities for cultural diplomacy are all around us. Each one of us, each one of you, can make a difference. And your understanding of cultural diplomacy will really determine the future of where you are and the world around you. Okay. Any, any questions or topics for discussion? I'm sure we have many questions, and that way I really would want to maybe I'll, I'll uh, set the mood uh, before the first question just with a, a preface uh, comment. So I think when I look at citizen diplomacy, uh, for me it's actually nothing new. Uh, I would argue that cultural diplomacy began a long time ago, uh, and really in ancient times the first interactions between human beings coming from different groups or cultures, in effect I would argue was cultural diplomacy. Uh, just like today, everybody in this room, everything by what you say and what you don't say, and what you do and what you don't do is actually an expression of who you are. So you could argue that really it goes way back. Uh, and really, in that sense, governmental culture diplomacy is actually a very short interruption. If you look at, let's say, 1872, it was the beginning of the Alliance Francaise, one of the oldest sort of French institutions for culture diplomacy. Uh, 1874 was Dante Alighieri from Italy. And then in the 20th century, you see most of the organizations that have been referred to today. It's actually a very short time uh, in the overall uh, time frame. So I would argue, to build on what you were saying, that really the future of culture diplomacy is actually going back to its roots. And something that began inherently people to people is actually going more in that direction. Uh, citizens coming together free from governmental agendas, free from private sector agendas, really interacting in a pure, authentic way can actually, I think, lead in a much more successful way to actually building trust uh, because it's actually not part of soft power trying to get something from someone, uh, but it's just the interaction itself. So anyway, just to underline the importance of what you were saying, and in the meantime, I have actually uh, seen a hand. So if you could please introduce yourself as well. 
Well, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Nasratullah Rasai, and I'm from Afghanistan. Uh, I've been in the U.S. through the Fulbright program. I studied uh, public health in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, and I just want to uh, agree with you uh, that individual has a very important role in cultural di diplomacy. And I, I, I have a very good example to, to share, which will complement your argument. Uh, so I, I, I was uh, in Denver through this Fulbright program, and I, we, we visited a, a Jewish family. And when we enter their uh, home, so uh, they learned that I'm, I'm from Afghanistan. So the, the guy, he was very hesitant to talk to me. But later on, when we started eating together and you know talking together, then he gave me a feedback, and he was uh, saying that I was kind of uh, scared when I heard a Muslim coming from Afghanistan to my home and then eating together. So how how is it possible? But when we had you know we we talked about different topics later on, uh, he was he he told me that I was very nice, and, and I also had the same idea. So based on this contact theory, uh, the more people have contact, uh, the less prejudice and, and, and you know, uh, stereotypes would, would be. So uh, that's just as an example to, uh, yeah, so thank to, you. to thank compliment. You. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you very much for your example. Additional comments or questions? Hi, my name is Monica Jordan. I'm from New York. Um, I do agree with your um, um, presentation that the cultural diplomacy starts um, anywhere, everywhere. Um, it's, it could start from your neighborhood, um, or it could be um, in, uh, going abroad, or simply by just trying to learn the literature or language of that country. I mean, um, there was this one saying that by learning another person's um, language or literature, you get the sense of their heart. Um, and um, I think that's really important in understanding other cultures. And by that, simply um, being um, curious, um, it really starts with um, um, curiosity, and then it soon um, explores to a larger picture of um, in w wanting to interact with other people and yeah, getting deeper. Understanding. I mean, and your, and your comment about uh, languages. I spent time in Alaska and, and, and delivered um, Eskimo and, and Aleut babies. And one of the things in Alaska is because they have so much snow, they have many, many words for snow. Yeah. Where here in, in Washington D.C. we have snow sometimes, but we have one word for snow, and it's snow. So the language really talks and really expresses a lot about about the world around you as well. Uh, yes, uh, I would like to add to uh, my colleague's uh, comment on uh, cultural diplomacy when he went to meet a Jewish family. Uh, yeah, sorry, I would like to introduce myself first. It's uh, Mohammed Akbar Al Handewal from uh, UNDP Kabul. Um, I had an experience uh, when I met a Jewish uh, person in the US, and uh, coincidentally, uh, we introduced each other, and uh, he was like around 60s or 70s. And uh, he was very keen, uh, you know, surprisingly. I didn't expect that from him. And he told us that uh, there was a time when Jewish communities lived in Afghanistan in exile for a very long time, and they had the best uh, hospitality and experience uh, while living for like 20, 30 years in Afghanistan. Uh, and, and, and they really appreciated how the Afghans uh, behaved with them and, and, and uh, how they were accepted into the community. And the fact that they also uh, spoke Dari and Pashto, so uh, this is this this came to me as a as a surprise, and, and which I think is a good example to 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 tell. In a very present yeah. day example. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any final comments or questions? What's interesting, you don't know this, uh, actually, um, Admiral Johnson, but we have a number of groups who are here together. We have one program, Afghanistan Meets the USA, a forum for young leaders, actually from Afghanistan and the region. Uh, also, USA Meets Africa, a uh, forum for young leaders. So it's a number of different groups. And I think in each of these relationships, your points can be very well received. And I think, really, it's not only a question of what kind of best practices can be done by citizens, but also the question, what kind of responsibility do we have? Uh, is it enough for me to just focus on me and my life and my family and my career? Or do I also need to think about 
you in the sense, what responsibility do I have for my neighbor? However we define neighbor, neighbor could be living on the same street or neighbor could be also another country or another part of the world. And I think it's a deep question as well. It's easy to point figures and say, ah, this country or that country or this and that. Uh, but what, are, what is the responsibility that we have as citizens? And in reality, I think it's a tremendous power. Uh, just look what was possible in Tunisia and Egypt, et cetera, when citizens did get together. I mean, you can actually overthrow a government. Uh, so in that sense, it's a tremendous power that very often we don't actually use. Uh, so I think it's important that we think about the responsibility and also the potential that we have as citizens to be constructive instead of destructive and to actually assist in relations. So, uh, yeah, so no, I'm, I'm very grateful for your comments. Okay, the final comment has, has emerged, and then we'll come to a conclusion. I just, when you just mentioned that, I just thought we could end by maybe telling everyone, invite foreigners to your home. Because, like, for example, through my work at the Confucius Institute, I always invite some of my Chinese teacher friends to our house, and some of them spend Easter with us. And it's a wonderful way to share our culture with their culture. And we even took her to church and to the cathedral. It's just, it's a really easy way for everyone to open up your home to other people from other cultures and build more bridges. Yes. So, but thank you very much. That was a fabulous talk. It's interesting you mentioned that I was talking to my colleague this morning uh, in a joking way about actually the possibility of requiring for ICD conferences that we require couch surfing for all participants uh, at exactly that point. Obviously, we won't do that, but it'd be interesting if you actually really had every participant always staying in the home of someone else. It uh, could be a really interesting way to actually, again, get insights you know, to the daily life of many different cultures. So I think that is an important point, so not to be underestimated. And well, And that's actually the way most high school exchange programs do work, whether they're for long periods of time or short periods of time. And that's been going on. When I was in high school, we had a group from Mexico staying at our house. Or, and then our son went to Japan and stayed at a Japanese house. So I mean, it's, it's been something that's happened for a long time. And I think it's, it's you, you see something, it's different when you're in the person's house. You see how they cook, you see how they do things. Definitely. Well, that's great. Well, all right. well uh, before I ask for a photo, I'd like to ask all of us to please express our sincere gratitude to Admiral Johnson for having come.